I did a research project last summer with um, some people who I had done my PhD in the same uh, around the same time, um, but their subjects are very different. So you, uh, Imke van Heerden did her PhD in English, um, and Anil Bath um, in computer science. Mm. And they're both now based in Turkey. They're a married couple. <laughs> um, oh. And they were looking at um, artificial intelligence and text generation for poetry. Okay. Um, and their book that has just been published is the first book of poetry, AI and human collaborative poetry in Afrikaans. Um, Imka is from South Africa. Oh, that makes sense. I was going to say, where's the link there? Yeah. <laughs> and so um, they've just done that project and they got in touch with me because Imka remembered that I was really interested in AI okay. with my PhD. So I'd written about kind of did science you, fiction. Did you know them previously? So I'd known them from the PhD. I see. Um, and we had, um, we, Imka and I had desks in a similar work area. Right. So we'd made friends and we'd sort of kept in touch. Mm. And she said, oh, do you want to write a screenplay with an AI? And I was like, yeah, that sounds amazing. Let's do that. <laughs> um, so we worked on developing um, the software a little bit, which I don't know a lot about, to be honest. Um, but that was fed with quite, I think it's the chat GPT-2 was the model. Um, we're on so four, are we now? Five? We're on four now. Four, yeah. Um, was part of the modeling all that mm. and they created and sort of their own data set of all the sort of screenplays that are freely available online and we fed the um the algorithm with all of that information um and then i just spent a few days with them on zoom and kind of via email sending in sections of script so i'd write a section and then they'd feed that into the algorithm and it would give me about 30 different options of the next set of the script right um rain in terms of would you tell it roughly what direction you wanted it to go in or just the, f the first bit and then it would yeah, extrapolate so it was kind from of there extrapolating and... its own choice of things mm. um and that was part of the process so we were really interested in the weirdness of it so not trying to make it feel perfectly like a human was writing something mm. but to have that as a kind of um an inspiration, a way of opening your mind beyond the way I think about language, which is what it did. Um, <laughs> and you can um, change the temperature, they call it, of how, um, I guess, normal the responses are for it to be kind of... The scale do you from want normal things to absurd. Or, <laughs> or, right. or more dull and boring. <clears throat> and that, that also is really fascinating. And, mm. um, and we've got this short script that's come out of it which is really nice um it's not what i thought the script would be when i started writing it which <sighs> is great <laughs> like working with any human collaborator it's the same thing you know you put something in and that's two minds thinking about things and then you something different comes out of the middle mm. um and it made me think about language slightly differently which is always fun when language is your thing <laughs> um and it's this really cute little shot. And we're hoping, we presented it at the Screenwriting Research Network last year um, at the annual conference. Um, we had a few actors reading out the script as part of that. And that was really neat. Nice. Um, and maybe the, the hope is we'll get to make it because I'd quite like to do a project as a research project of seeing where we could bring AI collaboration into other aspects of the filmmaking process. Mm. How do you feel about AI in that respect? I'm not terrified of it taking my job. Let's put it that way. That was pretty much the question. <laughs> I was just I was, that was the gist of the question I was trying to get out. Yeah, yeah, I think everyone is quite concerned, but we've been using things that are um, sort of we've used sort of types of algorithm already. Do you use spell check on your computer? Yeah. Do you use predictive text? <laughs> um, yes, on my phone. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, when you type into Google and it suggests to you, mm. like, the question you were trying do to answer. Do you click on the thing or do you, you keep typing? The, yeah, right. So mm. there are certain aspects of this that we have already invited into our lives. So parts of it are like that. I think, obviously, the fear is that this is something that will be able to generate work faster. And it does work very quickly. Um, I was experimenting with Bard, which mm. is Google's equivalent of the chat GPT. Uh, the week last week and that that's terrifyingly quick mm. with how and it provides you drafts and things like that 
but it also lies quite spectacularly. <laughs> um, I asked but, it to but, write a bio <laughs> of me and it made up a book that I'd written two years ago. I was like, in an alternative universe, yes, I would love to have written this book, but this book does not exist. <laughs> I've got the public, what the publisher should be, the year, what it looked did right. It, did it use up 50 words on the California? <laughs> no, it did what not. What was it, Rivers? Like? <laughs> <laughs> but it was, um, yeah, so I think, because there's a lot of panic around that. Well, I to, to me, I mean, I think I probably do err on the, or land on the side of slightly worried probably yeah more than maybe some i just, I just think this is the be- about? i think this is just the beginning well i, I don't know if it's con- it's probably more concern about not knowing uh, the the unknown because i think i i think this is the very start really of ai isn't it this is the, yeah it's a it's a baby at the moment <clears throat> and it's amazing already so <laughs> in 20 years time i can't imagine that <clears throat> um I just, I just, I just imagine it could probably write no- novels better than most authors. I mean, I had a conversation actually with our colleague Gary Hayton, who I yeah. know you're fond of as well. Um, <laughs> I have lots of interesting conversations with Gary in the office. I miss sharing an office with Gary. Oh, I got him now. <laughs> um, he was basically, he basically said though that it's the, it's the human experiences that are going into these stories that make them worth yeah. listening to. But, but I, I still think though. Robots are basically learning to mimic humans, right? So, so eventually, whether it really came from a human or not will be irrelevant because they would just mimic what we can do so well. That's surely the, the logical <clears throat> ending to this. I guess that's what science... I mean, this is what science fiction is priming us for. Mm. So, so much science fiction around artificial intelligence has that kind of... The attempt to emulate the human. And, mm. it's, and you know, we're, I mean, we're writing stories actually for humans, aren't we? With cautionary tales about how human <coughs> beings behave, but using the kind of format of AIs or aliens or whatever. But actually, we're talking about very human problems. Mm. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm interested to see an artificially intelligent novel written not for humans. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, would it even be in a in a recognizable language if it? <laughs> and does it have to be for humans? <laughs> well, I think the, the only thing is that, <laughs> but at the is, moment, is the humans that are interpreting to. anything as that, because yeah. you could argue the paint on that wall is actually a story written for paint. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, there's also yeah, you ask you, you the question is where is sentience and where is <laughs> awareness? Um, and at the moment, yes, we are making. Um, these algorithms to engage with humans and to mm. in- create stories, <coughs> but they are still requiring kind of human input. I don't yeah. think we're quite at that stage where there is no human input. No, I'm, I, but, but also I would say I'm not worried for the now. I'm worried for the 10, 15, 20 years when I'll hopefully still be alive <laughs> <laughs> and my children will grow up and they'll live in a world that maybe, I don't know. It's, I don't know. I, I, haven't, I can't, imagine, can't predict I think, it very clearly. I think there's that thing of, is it going to be <coughs> Skynet? Is it going to be, <laughs> you know, are we what, having the future of the Terminator? Or what's having... the one where the, the rich people live on an island above everyone else? Is that Elysium? Yeah, Elysium. Elysium. Yeah. <laughs> um, is it Blade Runner? Is it? <laughs> because, I mean, to be honest, I, I feel like maybe we could argue that social media was already a big step in the wrong direction. Like, there's some good things with social media. I suppose, like any of these things, it's a tool that can be good, used for good, but can also be quite detrimental. But I think, yeah, it's about the it's the <coughs> use of the tool, isn't it? That's the thing. At the moment, yeah. these AI um, text generators are a tool. Mm. And people are using them um, for good, perhaps for inspiration, for thinking about things a little bit differently. They're also using them nefariously for trying to cheat on various things. But as I said, if you're trying to cheat on an essay with that GPT, it's going to make up half of your references. 